Good morning. Uh, I'm John Karwaski, the uh, pharmacist for the Will's Eye facilities. And uh, the topic today is for the entire staff of the hospital to understand about securing medications in the facility and uh, drug diversion prevention. We're going to cover um, both what the changes and the impact to our society has, has occurred over the last few years and how institutions need to think about and be aware of uh, their surroundings and report uh, any concerns they have with the storage and control of, of drugs in the facility. So with that, let's move on to, um, the, but, but first, you know, it's really never a problem, we're good, but when it becomes a problem of diversion, then it is a, a concern for, for everyone. Diversion is defined as the transfer of any legally prescribed controlled substance from the individual for whom it was prescribed to another person for illicit use. So many times that's through theft, um, removing drugs from syringes or vials and replacing them with something else, taking drugs from, from storage in a facility for, for uh, use, personal use or resale. It leads to addiction in many people that begin using controlled substances illegally. It's a primary chronic disease reflected by an individual pathologic pursuing reward or relief from a substance use. Addiction is characterized by the inability to abstain from that sought substance. That is our big concern in the workplace, that an individual who may become addicted to a substance needs access to that substance. And that's another area where we have to be uh, careful of. Well, the opioid abuse epidemic is, is nationally. Whenever you turn on the news, read the newspaper, addiction is in our society. It begins small with controlled substances, possibly prescribed for pain management after same-day surgery or accident, and these individuals continue to stay on these medicines. These physicians continue to write these prescriptions, and soon addiction uh, moves in and it's caused the DEA to rewrite their regulations, start task forces, and offer training like we're doing today to all healthcare professionals. There's been an increase in number of deaths caused by prescription drug diversion abuse. And again, overprescribing of pain medication killers is a biggest and most complex concern. Medical students receive an average of 11 hours of training during their um, schooling on pain medications. Physicians sometimes do not have the ability to counsel the patients on correct use and also disposal of these medications. And this leads to the uh, opioid abuse problem. Just to show you a slide, since 1999 to current, overdoses resulting from opioid analgesics and heroin. And you can see in the later, most recent years, heroin overdoses is increasing dramatically in our country. Um, this has prompted many organizations to uh, pursue the um, reasons for uh, having this occur. Opioid and heroin abuse is not just in the urban setting. Okay, we're finding it um, in all areas of our society. Everyone's story is the same. I got addicted to prescription painkillers and then, you know, we get into the uh, diversion problems and the uh, illicit drug use. The DEA is focusing really hard on overprescribing by physicians and diversion of drugs in facilities that stock and, and use these types of medications. Again, another area for access is your homes. When you get a prescription for uh, an, illicit, a, a, an opioid product and you take it for a few days and the remainder of the bottle sits in your medicine cabinet, this has um, prompted the DEA to spend more uh, time alerting the community of, about these medications at home. We call it the friends and, friends and family discount. There's actually YouTube videos where the mother puts their remainder of pain medicines or sleeping pills in the cabinet. Kid comes along and um, uses those for recreational use. So again, we're getting physicians to understand that they have a role in counseling the patients on the proper disposal of these medications. We know what these medications are. 
and we know what uh, people are using out on the street, the Vicodins, the Percocets, the Oxys, fentanyls, Soma, anything that's a controlled substance is dangerous and addictive. Fentanyl has been found to be mixed with heroin recently. In the state of Delaware, more overdoses from heroin have occurred in the first six months of 2016 than the whole prior year combined. And it is these deaths that um, we have to avoid that mixing with prescription meds with um, illicit drugs. What are the local efforts right now? Well, one of the things in New Jersey, they've started a drug diversion coalition. I'm a member of that. We have annual meetings. We have quarterly phone calls. We're developing toolkits on how to educate health workers on their role in preventing this, uh, this epidemic. I went to an all-day training course put on by the DEA for pharmacists out in Pittsburgh. It helps pharmacists, not just hospital pharmacists, but retail drugstore pharmacists learn how to identify uh, false prescriptions, and protect their institutions from, from any diversion. Surveyors are looking for anti-diversion training for staff such as you in surgery centers, in hospitals, making sure that we're all part of the team in fighting this, uh, this epidemic. One of the things that I feel very strong about is this proper disposal of medications when patients get discharged and are finished their uh, short-term use of, of a controlled substance. I cover many um, uh, surgery centers throughout the area. Many are doing um, cases, uh, say orthopedics, that require uh, Percocet or, or uh, Tramadol uh, at discharge. What does the individual do with the remainder is very, very important. In New Jersey, this poster is put out by the New Jersey Consumer Affairs. Every institution that this prescribes painkillers and narcotics must furnish information on drop-off centers to every patient. In Pennsylvania, it's not a law, but we, we uh, urge strongly that institutions share to the patient where these drop-off centers are. And usually the DEA has centers in police stations, firehouses, and it's secured. I was visiting one in Ben Salem, Pennsylvania. Uh, the police department have two of these metal boxes for disposal of drugs by, by anyone that wants to get rid of their drugs. That's totally overseen by the DEA. The police department do not even have access to these containers. How does it affect us in our institutions? We run infection risks because of, of staff possibly injecting themselves with these medications, replacing them with saline. And this has been documented in certain parts of the country. And it's hard to believe that someone would inject themselves with a controlled substances in the workplace, fill that syringe back up with saline, and then use that on a patient. And I usually get a shock, uh, a look of shock by many, many nurses when we talk about this. How can somebody do that? But as we go back to that addiction, the definition of an addiction, these individuals need to seek this, this substance. And they, as a last resort, turn to drugs in your own facility for relief of the um, results of what addiction can cause. This is local, southern New Jersey, 2016. Pharmacists accused of morphine theft, replacing possible the medications with saline and possibly contaminating over 200 patients in a New Jersey hospital. And this made the news. And um, just recently in Idaho, a OR technician was sentenced to four years in jail of his uh, diversion of narcotics in hospitals in that area and replacing them with medicine, uh, of, with saline and contaminating patients at that institution. And he was convicted. So we see various outbreaks and we follow these and we want to understand and educate staff that this is a risk. I go into facilities, we don't have a problem. We've never had a problem. We know everybody. We're safe here. I think we need to pay attention to our surroundings, our fellow employees, and identify to those supervisors any concerns you may have. Because patient safety is at risk. Employees under the influence of controlled substances are unfit to care for patients. If an employee is substituting the drug with saline, it could mean that the patient gets a partial dose or no dose at all and possibly being contaminated. The best barrier is with the management team, which I work with, and we're looking at ways to monitor, be proactive. One of the things we want to do is educate 
and, and make sure that everybody is part of this um, uh, uh, survey. We engage in risk analysis at here and at our other centers to de determine where possible diversion risk uh, can be found. Recognize also that what medications we're talking about are the scheduled drugs scheduled by the DEA. And you can see on every package, whether it's a bottle, a vial, um, a container, that a, Roman, a capital C with a Roman number in the middle. Number two means it's a C2 narcotic. There's a three and a four that are also stocked in, in the uh, facilities. These drugs are, are, are the controlled substances that we have to count, secure, accurately uh, waste with witnesses. And um, this is a requirement of the DEA that when you inventory these medications, you have complete accuracy. The continuum of these medications when they're ordered, enter into the facility, unpacked, signed in, administered to the different nursing units, and finally administered to the patient are all risks for breaks and diversion. There's no single area that risk is less than another. And what my job is to, to do is to look at every spot along the continuum to make sure that we are secure. And some of these spots are going to be that we need to count on the staff in the facility to um, point out concerns that you may have. This is a count sheet that we typically use, it's a perpetual declining inventory. Manual system works really well. We just have to be accurate. If we write a number wrong, what do we do? We don't write over the number. We put a line through it and correct it. We make sure that all waste is signed with a witness. And as RNs, we would never want you to be in a position to sign for waste that you didn't see wasted. Many of my facilities come to me and, and the nurses are saying, oh, well, the CRNA came at the end of the day and they just said, sign these three lines. I wasted the medication earlier. That is a danger for you to get involved with. Because once that door opens, if an individual is seeking these medications, we don't know if they were actually wasted without your witnessing it. So point this out to your supervisor if you're put in a compromising position by asking uh, for your signature for waste. And the count sheets are, again, reviewed daily by um, the supervisors and, and management for accuracy and, and compliance with uh, security of these drugs. In the anesthesia carts, they get, hand, they get transferred medications in a little kind of tackle box. They are accountable to keep that supply accurate throughout the day and, and return it in a sealed cabinet for refill. And again, these sheets are audited and reported monthly to uh, the committees that need to know about accuracy of these medications. Disposal. What do we do with disposal when you're finished up with the procedure? I just had a joint commission survey up in Bucks County. They went up to the anesthesiologist, the surveyor, and said, doctor, when you're done uh, with your procedure and you have some fentanyl, where do you, how do you dispose of that? He says, oh, I shoot it in a trash can. That's not the policy of the facility. That was written up on the final summation of the joint commission report because that facility had a special disposal system in place where narcotics need to be wasted. So know what your facility policy is. I know we installed RX Destroyer. RX Destroyer has a carbon product in that jug that makes this medicine inactive. The DEA wants you to dispose of controlled substances in a place that makes them non-retrievable, either by chemical uh, in, uh, digestion or uh, incineration. So the RX Destroyer is an appropriate mechanism and source to waste your controlled substances. And we want to make sure that everybody's aware of how to use this and properly trained if, if um, you're new to the institution. We really think, number one, better employees equal better surgical centers, hospitals, extended care facilities. Putting up barriers for diversion, you're not uh, presenting an opportunity for diversion to happen. Hiring employees who feel confident in and maintaining good lines of communication. Um, ensuring that there's no room for diversion here. Buying in to this anti-diversion um, is, is key. And when we have a possible diversion, we need to report that. I get involved, we had a diversion in another one of our hospitals that requires reporting to the DEA. The police 
visited the facility, spent 45 minutes touring the facility, and, and interviewing staff about their um, responsibilities in the area where the diversion was. So it's not a pleasant situation when we have missing narcotics, but we must act quickly and correctly when and if that would occur. We do have a, du a duty to report if we find individuals, and we do have a duty to report um, to that uh, local board that that employee is a member of. And we all have a legal and ethical responsibility to report anyone that you think is, imp seems impaired or not performing normally, because the bottom result is our patients could be harmed. That's the talk today. I could spend more time uh, in the future if this is a subject you need to um, and, and want to learn more about. But my bottom line is take ownership of your areas, speak up if you have concerns about any risks of security in your area or individuals in your area. I can give you many examples in my interactions with my centers throughout the um, area throughout the state of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, even into Maryland where um, we've discovered diversion. We found uh, a, a nurse in the recovery area in recording administration of controlled substance to every one of his patients at the maximum amount that was on the anesthesia order orders. When we counted up the amount of the lauded, he signed for the patient it totaled sometimes over six milligrams of IV diluted, which we realized that that 65-year-old uh, woman would have died from if that was that much narcotics. So as we looked at this in the nurse's charts, we realized that he was diverting these narcotics. He had a criminal record in another state, and, and it forced us to report uh, him to the, uh, to the local um, nursing board. In another area, we discovered the OR supervisor replacing the Demerol out of a syringe that was prescribed by the doctor with saline and injecting herself with, with Demerol in the workplace. You probably have examples of, of situations that have occurred in, in uh, your travels. So please remember you're part of this and hopefully we can have this facility the safest it can be when it comes to um, narcotic diversion prevention. Thanks a lot. Any questions?